The ability to use these human names, URLs, domain names online is facilitated by a worldwide system that's known as DNS or the domain name system. Uh, the domain name system is responsible for translating these human readable names like www.buffalo.edu into machine readable names, IP addresses, either IPv4 or IPv6. And so that's the responsibility of the domain name service. One way to think about DNS, as suggested by the Wikipedia page, is kind of like a phone book. So, you know, you look up someone's name in the phone book and you get a number. And that number is what you punch into the phone. So when your computer goes to a website, it looks like looks up the name that you type into the location bar in this DNS address book and it gets a response. Obviously, you know, with any sort of worldwide system with billions of computers connected to it, the, the, the reality is a little bit more complicated than that, so let's talk about it. Um, the, uh, you know, so the domain name system consists of domain name servers, uh, or DNS servers, all over the world. Most autonomous systems, maybe even all of them, will operate their own DNS server uh, to translate domain names that, that point into their, into their own system, right? So um, buffalo.edu has domain name uh, servers set up. Those can be used by hosts here, and those are responsible for translating records uh, that correspond to buffalo domain names. Um, but they also, um, but they also allow you to retrieve uh, other domain names. And all of these domain name servers are essentially ex constantly exchanging information uh, in between themselves concerning different records. So you might ask, you know, if I change a domain online, let's say I uh, take www.internetclass.org and I want to point it to a different IP address, how does everybody find out about that? Well, the first thing I do is I'm going to change it on you know, the server that's the authoritative server for this. So in this case, it would be some sort of domains.google server. Um, and then what's going to happen is over time, that change is going to propagate. So I've made a new entry. Uh, for a little while, if I ask one of these other servers how to translate that, I may actually get a stale answer. I may get the wrong address. Um, and so it's important that these don't change that frequently. Uh, but over time, what's going to happen is this update is going to propagate out to all the other domain name servers. Um, and the, everybody will see the up-to-date entry. Now, there's one important difference between DNS and a phone book, and it concerns um, load balancing and also makes it possible for us to operate what are called content delivery networks. So the simplest way to think about DNS is that all of these computers are cooperating to make sure that there's a unique translation between a domain name and an IP address. In reality, not quite true. Different computers in different parts of the world can ask the same question. They could ask to, to translate a particular domain name. So let's say this computer is, is over here in a, in a very oval Japan, and this computer is over here in the US. And let's say they both are asking the domain name system the question, what is the IP address corresponding to the name www.buffalo.edu? Now, in the simplest case, the answer is the same for both of them. But one of the primary ways that we try to improve performance online is actually by pushing content closer to users. So if this user in Asia has to communicate with this website all the way back in Buffalo, the connection, the time it takes for data to transfer back and forth might cause the page to load fairly slowly. Whereas let's say this user is in New York State. Let's see if I can draw a New York State. It kind of looks like this, right? Okay. There we go. So this <laughs> this user's in New York State. It might have a much uh, uh, the, the page much much little, the page might load much faster in New York State than it did you know Singapore, Japan, or whatever. So how do we address this? So one of the ways that the domain name service addresses this is it allows people that register domain names to translate them differently depending on where the request is coming from. So what Buffalo might do, and I don't think we do do this, uh, but what Buffalo might do is it might say, you know what, I'm going to sign up with what's called a content delivery network or a CDN, and I'm going to, what they're going to do is they're going to host the sources from my website on some web server that might be in Japan or it might be in Asia somewhere. And so when this computer looks up www.buffalo.edu, it gets you know IP address, let's just call this A, 
and IP address A is located close to it. And so the connection that it has with that server is fast and the page loads quickly. Same thing here. So when this guy looks up www.buffalo.edu, it might get IP address B. And this might not be the same. So this is where the phone book analogy falls down. The domain name service does not guarantee that two domain names resolved in different places are actually going to resolve to the same IP address. This is not a bug. This is actually a feature because it allows us to respond to where the request is coming from. So when a DNS request comes from Asia, I try to resolve it to a server located in Asia. If the DNS request comes from the States, I might try to resolve it to a server located in the States. Now this strategy is something that's done, you know, that, that requires setup and requires all sorts of infrastructure. This so, so this is not done by every website. Small websites um, don't need to do this. They don't want to pay for uh, the, the price that it would cost to distribute their content all over the world. But big popular websites, they all do this. So if you run a trace route uh, to a particular website for different parts of the world, what you'll find is a trace route to you know, NewYorkTimes.com from Asia, it's not going to come all the way across the, the Pacific. It's going to terminate somewhere in Asia where the New York Times is paying someone to host content for their website so that the round trip times are a lot shorter. So the domain name service, a bunch of computers all over the world cooperating to translate names, somewhat similar to a phone book with the important exception that the domain name service allows um, people to push content closer to the users by allowing the same domain name to be translated differently depending on where the request is originating.